joining us now with his reaction and first on CNBC interview, Cleveland Cliff CEO Lorenco Goncalves. Thank you so much for being here, Lorenco. So let's let's start first of all with U.S. Steel's perspective, um, basically saying that you re you've refused to sign a customary NDA that would have helped them assess the valuation of the stock component in your offer and the regulatory risk associated with the deal. Is that true? And if so, why deny them that NDA, which is seen as pretty customary in the M&A world? Uh, it's not true. Uh, actually, I was working uh, diligently with my uh, uh, legal advisors to get to language that I could sign. But uh, they were hard to move, and uh, they uh, were working uh, from their position of delay tactics. Uh, they start with the 18 months. Um, uh, um, standstill provision that would be absurd. We were narrowing down the time for something more manageable, but then they were basically demanding that I would not talk to the USW. And talking to, to the USW is mandatory because they have a provision in their labor agreement that gives the USW the opportunity, the possibility to counter offer any offer. So I was able to clear that, preempting that. And I have full support of the USW, uh, and they will not support anyone else other than Cleveland Cliffs. And so that's not something that I can change the past. So that's why I did not sign the NDA. Because you were still seeking uh, government approvals, what was their rationale for, you know, not wanting you to go forward with that? Uh, we uh, believe that we have a compelling case that the government should be not only approving, but enthusiastically supporting this deal. We will finally have, after a few decades, uh, a steel maker that is in, among the top 10 in the world. The steel business is a world business. Our main competitor is always imports, and a lot of dumping, a lot of uh, uh, subsidies, governments trying to chime into our markets. So we are finally having one that will be at the same level of ArcelorMittal and Nippon Steel and Bosco and all the Koreas. And by the way, all these companies in the top 10, they were built based on mergers and acquisitions. The number one is Bao Wu. The Bao is Bao Steel from Shanghai. The Wu is Wuhan from Wuhan City. So even in China, they have merged. ArcelorMittal is a merger between Arcelor and, and, and Middle. And yep. uh, Arcelor by itself was a merger between Aceralia, uh, Arbed, and the Uzinor. So I'm, I'm using the playbook and I, I am extracting the synergies and creating jobs and union jobs. That's a good thing for the country. That's a good thing for Cleveland Cliffs. I, I want to follow up on the jobs aspect in, in just a minute. But in terms of the regulatory approval, this regulatory environment is notoriously difficult relative to what's happened in the past. Uh, the combined share of exposed automotive steel would be over 50 percent of the market if this steel were to go through, according uh, to key bank analysts. And it would also constitute more than 50 percent of the carbon sheet consumption. Both of those likely to present regulatory issues, uh, especially in this current environment, no? You're using the wrong source. You're using someone that's not seeing the big picture. If you narrow down the geographical area, you're going to say that uh, here in Cleveland, I have 100% because there is only one steel mill and I own that mill. But the problem is the market's not just the United States. Uh, we compete against steel coming from South Korea. We compete against steel coming from Japan. The transplants like the steel from Japan. The transplants from Korea like the steel from Korea. Same thing with the Germans. The specifications are, are written in abroad. Even companies that are members of the, the, the Detroit Three, they have headquarters in, in, in one of them that has a headquarter in Europe. So the, the fight is in a much bigger geography. And in that regard, we are very small, even after the merger. Another thing is that not only steel, a lot of the materials used in a car for exposed parts, for doors, for roofs, for ceilings, uh, for uh, 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 everything that you see in a car in the outside, the exposed parts are aluminum. I drive a car that the, 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 the outside is aluminum, not steel. So we have to compete against alternate materials, and uh, no car manufacturers is shy to replace steel with another materials if they can. So we need to have scale. We need to be able to compete. 
We need to continue to create jobs in the United States, and that's what we're doing.